Drivers who switch and save with Progressive save over $700 on average, and those savings add up. Imagine what you could buy in the future. So I used the savings from switching to Progressive 30 years ago to buy tickets to the championship game. You know, between those two teams that didn't exist 30 years ago? Yeah, I'm a big Alaska Palm Trees fan. Which is a team now, in the future? So switch to Progressive and save big, because those savings can add up in the future. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customer surveyed who saved with Progressive in 2020. Potential savings will vary. Welcome to Women Winning Divorce with your host, Heather Quick. Heather brings over 20 years of law experience that advocates and empowers women to achieve happier and healthier lives. Each week, we provide knowledge and guidance on different aspects of family law to help lead women through the difficult and emotional legal challenges that they are facing. Listen in as she discusses issues including divorce, custody, alimony, paternity, narcissism, mediation, and other family law issues to provide insight on the journey of women. Women winning divorce. Welcome to the show. I'm Julie Morgan, and I'm joined by your host, Heather Quick. Hi, Heather. How are you? I'm wonderful, Julie. How are you today? I'm doing very well. It's been a busy week already, and you know, we're recording this show just for everyone listening. We're recording this particular episode on a Tuesday, and it's been a busy week for me already. What about you? Well, you know it. It is. We are getting full swing with school back. And I feel like August, in a lot of ways, you know, um, well, because I've had kids, it seems like forever now, which I have. And it's always that kind of like, okay, back to school, you know? So you, your life just changes with kids and how you view the year and the calendar year. Everything revolves around them. I'm just telling you, they take over your life. And so August is like, okay, back to school, which, We're all like, on one hand, excited about, but then you're like, man, the summer went by so fast, but then it's exciting for them because they've all grown and, you know, they get to experience, you know, school one year older. So yeah, so it's just a busy time because then you have a different busyness once they're back in school, you know, got to get back to waking up early, going to bed early, making lunches, dinners, none of this, you know, out to the beach and pool till eight o'clock. So Heather, all of that sounds fun. (laughs) <laughs> it is. It it absolutely I'm, is. I'm sure it is. Children are definitely a blessing. So t- let's talk about today's topic, when enough is enough. I think I told you this makes me think about that Jennifer Lopez movie, Enough. I don't know if you've seen that movie, have you? I haven't, but I, I remember like she cuts her hair and she's like, she's like, it, she decides like, I am done with you. Yeah. And then becomes kind of a, um, like super fit, right? And tough yeah. and is ready. Yeah. So, okay, well, I might not have to go watch it. Yeah. Yeah. You got to watch that. So how do you know when it's time for it to end? How do you know that? You know, I, I think it, I know it is a difficult question and it really is. Um, I think what happens is it's not one thing. Sometimes it is. Sometimes there's just one massive action, something that happens, and then, you know, you make that decision. But I think it is over time. It's little things. Like, it's not like the one answer. And, you know, based on my experience, you know, I I have listened to so many women, and there eventually is something. And they've made the decision maybe years prior that I'm not saying in this marriage— And they kind of maybe negotiate with themselves, like, and I'm going to wait until the kids start. Maybe sometimes they start high school, they start college. There's something that they're in their mind ready. And then other times, like, they knew they were going to get divorced, not win. They just kind of were like, I know I'm not, this isn't going to last. And something might happen that really makes them make that decision forward. Mm -hmm. Kind of like... It, it it does. I think eventually you make that decision. And you're like, I'm it, enough. And just like you said, it is enough. And we'll talk about it more as we go through. But, um, you know, I think there's lots of things that build up over time. Okay. So I was thinking maybe it's maybe, you know, one thing and they're just like, you know what? Okay, I'm done. So it's not that. I think sometimes it is, but that it would be the exception rather than the rule. I think that and in an example of that, and it's not for everybody, but there are um, some women, you know, and usually, you know, we've talked, we've had a lot of um, 
shows about various types of abuse and um, you know manipulation. But some some women, I think they have enough support if they got hit. You know, if it once it gets to that, they're out. Like there are those. Again, those are some of the exceptions, but that's like a big, and they're like, no, I'm out, I'm done, you know, mm -hmm. um, once that happens. And, but generally, I think there are many multiple things that build up over time. Yeah. So it's not an impulse decision. So about how long do you think that most women think about divorce? You know, I, like if I were guessing, I used to think it was longer, but the research shows that it's, uh, most women have been thinking about it for four years and I thought it was more like 10 um, but four years is still a long time I think it's you know as we'll talk about it they think about it they might do some research you know or they may be listening to this radio show um, a lot of things and that's a lot of reasons why we have a lot of resources available because it's not something that you generally are going to be like wake up and be like I am doing this today you know, I, it, you, if you do think of that, you're doing that today, you've been thinking about it for some time. Mm, okay. But, you know, I, I look at this and, well, like, I'm thinking about this and I'm saying, well, what if he's a good guy? He's a good dad. Should you just stay if you have those two factors going for you? Um, I would say no. I Listen, I mean, it's a personal decision. I think that... I think that, you know, most people, obviously, when they get married, they have all the best intentions and, you know, they want to make it work. But when, you know, sometimes we're just not compatible and, and you may be wanting to go in a different direction and grow and you feel as though like they're not on the same path with you. And, um, you know, you just kind of ha are like, I just, this is not, I'm not being the best person I can be with you. And maybe I can be a better person away from you. And I think that that does make it harder. I've certainly talked to many women and, and sometimes, you know, they got married because they were pregnant. And so they felt like they and I, and I don't necessarily, I really don't disagree with that. I know a lot of people are like, oh, that's no reason to get married. I mean, that's like a really good reason to get married. Um, so I, um, I, I think that just comes with, you know, who we are. And, you know, I think sometimes you wake up probably, especially if you're married younger. On one hand, you wake up one day and you're like, oh my gosh, this was not the path I wanted to take. And I want to do something different. And yeah, he's a great guy, which makes it harder because people don't understand. But, you know, you want, that can be great that they're a good guy and a good dad, but you're supposed to be in a partnership with a marriage and have a friendship and, you know, that caring and love for each other. And sometimes when that's not there, it's, um, it's lonely. Mm. Yes, yes, yeah. Mm. That's interesting. So, Tell me this, have you found that women uh, tend to set the bar low for what they find acceptable in a relationship? So basically they'll accept a lot, you know, before they leave. I think so. Yes, I do. And, you know, I think, you know, if you do the research, women are more likely to be pleasers. You know, they might not want to rock the boat, don't want to break up the family. Women, and, and it's the same way they go through the divorce, but then in the relationship, they're thinking about everybody and how how everybody will be affected more often, you know, like, oh, but I like his parents, you know, how are they going to be, or I'm close with this family. There are a lot of things to think about. And, you know, this, of course, me being biased, um, I don't think men think about that at all, you know, and they're <laughs> like, I'm done and I like this girl better, I'm out. And they don't ever think about it. And then they go jump into the exact same situation they were in before mm -hmm. and they're such... You know, it's just like you just repeated the pattern and why you think it's going to be different. It's not. But I, I that is just my point of view. I think men, mm -hmm. it's very much easier for them to if, you know, there's something they don't like or whatever, they're out. But women I, consider more factors. I think it's interesting that one of the things that you said was I like his family. I like his parents. I, I, I figured that would probably be at the top of the list of the reasons to leave. Well, 
you know, and that is such an interesting dynamic. Like, I know we've talked about it before, but, you know, there's not a whole lot of classes or information or anything. I'm like, how do you know, you know, who you should marry uh, and, and all of that? And I think some of us intuitively, we we make better, we m- make a better match than others. But still, I mean, there's not work. I mean, you know, both people have to be invested and willing to do that. But I do think that family dynamic, just like you said, and I promise you we'll talk about it come holidays because, man, after those holidays, some women, they're like, I am done. That is the last Thanksgiving I am spending at that family's house. Like, I've had it. So, um, you know, that that definitely happens. Okay, so you're telling me we're going to have a show about in-laws. Ooh, God, that could be touchy. We'll have to, we'll, I'll have to think about that. Maybe just a few comments. But um, but it does, you know, and I know we talked about this before. Your, your like, family of origin, where you come from, it influences you so much. And if you don't truly understand where your spouse came from in those dynamics, many times that, that part can be incompatible. And many times it doesn't really show up until the kids are, you have children together. And then all of a sudden, Mm -hmm. some things you just can't overcome. And that's why I think also for women, you know, if they're listening to this, think about this. Because you're creating your children's family of origin. That's how they learn what a family is and how a husband and wife are supposed to act. That's their training ground. So, you know, if you guys aren't affectionate and like just don't really show love or compassion or just even like caring consideration for the other person, respect, it that's going to be what they're used to. And that is a very good reason to really check what are you doing to them by remaining in a relationship. And that should absolutely come into you know, that whatever you're checking the boxes or when is enough enough. I mean, really take a hard look at that. And if you're honest with yourself about what behavior you're modeling, that that's a difficult, you know, realization for a lot of people. And a lot of people, you know, aren't willing to do that. And you know what? That's the flip side of something else I was thinking about. When you you think about enough is enough, some people look at the viewpoint of others and how they're going to look if they decide to walk away. Oh, I think that is like way up there. I mean, that is probably the bigger fear is what are people going to think rather than all the other things we've talked about, reasons that they don't get divorced. And when you can really admit that, I think that's helpful. But yeah, you're all worried. Everybody wants, oh my God, what are they going to say? What are, are people going to all be talking about me? Which the reality is everybody's too busy and not that many people care that much to talk about you and what you're doing and they're not there to help you through it. But I think your worry about what others are going to say and think, particularly family, you know, in-laws, you know, all that. Yeah, yeah that's, a, I think that is a major um barrier for a lot of people that they might not even be aware of but it's there because i think that's kind of human nature is very much so and i'm thinking you know definitely that that's that's the case but i'm thinking you know it'll it'll pass in a in a in a certain period of time so it's really actually not that big of a deal people will then go on with their lives and think about and talk about other things yeah, most most of us, um, you know, is as much as you know. I like you, Julie, but you know, if you if you got up and left and got divorced, I mean, I'm not thinking I'm going to be po- talking about it and calling up Betsy and Melissa. Do you believe that? Do you believe Julie did that? And then, you know, talk about it for or think about it for more than a few minutes, unless I'm yeah. your attorney, of course, and that's yeah. different. But you know, as far as our social circle, I think we we think maybe a little bit more about ourselves and really everybody out there is thinking really more about themselves than other people <laughs> and yeah, not in a bad way, but you know, it's like, no, they're not. I mean, of course there's some people who like to, you know, gossip or whatever, but I think overall we build that up and then that's a good excuse reason not to take action. You know, I think we all as human beings 
are good at coming up with reasons not to do what maybe we know we ought to do or that would be better for us or others. Uh, you know, I think I think mm -hmm. that that is something that's a that we all do. And, you know, maybe I think one of the things that I've heard, you know, that women, you know, have have told us over the years something happens where maybe they see they see something in their kids that opens their eyes to the effect this is having um i've had even women say hey i heard something my grandchild said about that and i was just like no i am not going to continue on this and and model this behavior and all those things because women just like we were talking about not only, I mean, are they pleasers, but they're more likely to take action on behalf of someone they love more so than themselves. And I think that's true with a lot of us. You know, sometimes we are the worst critics to ourselves and we would never, you know, we would never think that way or talk that way to a friend or a loved one or maybe even a stranger is the way we kind of can second guess ourselves and be hard on ourselves. So I think sometimes it that enough is enough if a woman can step a little bit outside herself, see the situation and, and the effect it has on others, um, that allows them to take that step forward as well. Mm. I think it's so interesting how this show touches on so much more than divorce. You're listening to Women Winning Divorce with Heather Quick, owner and attorney for Florida Women's Law Group. When we return, we're gonna talk about when you're just not happy. Stay with us. Welcome back to Women Winning Divorce with Heather Quick, owner and attorney of Florida Women's Law Group. Heather, when you're just not happy. You know what, I, I have, do you sometimes, do you not, sometimes not know that you're not happy? Does that make sense? I, you know, I think so. And I think maybe it's, you know, happiness, you know, being happy is, can be a fleeting, emotion at times, but you're just not feeling fulfilled either. I think there's, it's, it's more than that because, you know, we may have ups and downs, but sometimes when you're in it, um, it might be harder to see. And that's when maybe sometimes, you know, your loved ones, your friends, they can see it a little bit clearer because they, you know, they have more of an objective view, but I, I think so. I think that you know, if you've ever met somebody, like maybe you hadn't seen them in a few years or you knew them, you know, before they were married or early in their marriage, and then you see them late and you're like, wow, like you're not the same person and not in a good way. You know, obviously we want to be with people who make us better. And in the ideal world and a great marriage, you both, you know, really bring out the best in each other and compliment each other. And same with all relationships and friendships and things like that. I mean, that's what I think we all strive for. But there are some that just don't, you know, and mm -hmm. I think you might not be the same person that you were when you got married. And I think that's OK in a lot of ways, because we are supposed to grow as humans and we're supposed to get better. And, you know, I would think if you are growing for an interest, you know, you're going to want to watch different TV shows than you did when you were, you know, 25. And you're going to want to talk about different things than you did when you were 25. And, the and if the other person hasn't, like, it, then it could be, you know, that can be awkward. Yeah. And the reason why I asked that question is because, you know, I, I've, I've spoken, I've interviewed lots of different um, doctors of, of different uh, specialties. And psychiatrists will say that some people that are depressed, they don't even know it. Yeah, and I think because they're getting used to that norm and they do need to talk to somebody to ask them some questions to maybe bring that out. Mm -hmm. So I do. I, I think that you don't and, you know, part of you does inside, but, you know, we've talked about that before. I mean, denial is a wonderful thing. <laughs> and your body uses it to cope, you know, your, your brain, you, you do that to cope. But eventually, you know, hopefully you can have some clarity on on your situation. 
And so if someone does realize that they're just not happy, right? There are a lot of reasons that could be, um, and you mentioned some of them um, earlier, their interests may have changed. Right. And, you know, the, and really, the, even if they're both working or whatever, you know, but you're just, you don't like to do the same things anymore. And sometimes the longer you're married and if you don't make efforts to do, you know, I don't think you need to be together 24 seven, you know, everybody should have their own things and own time. But like, if there's not anything, I mean, if you guys don't even like to go to the same restaurants, you know, some people are like, he doesn't ever want to go out to eat like nowhere or he doesn't like the movies. You know what you hear is and that can be the reverse, you know, and probably that's some kind of depression. You know, if you don't ever want to go engage in anything or walk or exercise, you know, health is a big thing, too. I think that, you know, if you're with a spouse and you're in a relationship and you're really enjoy getting out there and moving and exercising and just you know doing activities and your spouse like doesn't and won't take care of themselves you know and then you're like that could be a really big reason to think you know why you know you're just not even trying you won't even go on a walk and there they there's no more common ground anymore and it doesn't happen overnight it happens over time and we have jobs, we have households, maybe children. You know, you have a lot of things that can take up a lot of time. And but then I think eventually one day you wake up and you're like, wow, like we don't do anything together. And maybe we don't want to. I think there comes a point where you're like, and I don't want to. <laughs> Even if he said yes, I don't want to do it with it. I don't want to go on vacation with him. Like he's no fun. He complains the whole time. We can't go do anything. You know, and I think that is part of it. Like there's that new hobbies or just anything that starts changing, but you guys aren't doing it. You're not changing and evolving together. Something that you you said that made me think about this, you said health and how health and wellness is really important. And that means that if you are paying a attention to that, we're living longer, right? And yeah. so what if you don't see yourself with that person in the future? Right. And um, and that can be, you know, you might say, gosh, you know, and a lot of times too, you know, if you think about how we behave as human beings and when, you know, change is not easy for anyone. You know, a lot of people resist change, but that's the one thing we know for sure is things change. They always change. But, you know, you can either embrace that or not, but also with changing and as we all go through life, we experience things that maybe then help us understand our own mortality, like the death of loved ones, of parents, you know, of, you know, and I think a lot of people certainly through COVID, there's a lot of that. And that is just like where it shakes you because you see people something crazy happened and you're just like I don't know um you didn't expect it but now that you've like it's your part of your reality it's like life is short which it is every day we we you know but not everybody it's not in your face is often and then um you start to then say wow okay is this how I'm gonna spend it um if now he you know we both want to have this i don't want to work all the time i want to do you know what what do they call van life you know and buy a camper and let's go work on the road and you might be like ah, no thank you i'm not doing that i mean if my husband told me that i'd be like have a nice time you know call me when you get to the rent and see spend the weekend with you but i'm not living in a van um so, but, you know, you can see how that could happen. I mean, you know that, Julie, you're live, but you can, you know, you do not see me living in a van or camping. Mm -mm, not at all. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Glamping. And he, know, and he knows that maybe, kind of, and I have my, you know, and he knows that. I'm like that, you can go on, go get yourself a trailer in the woods. Like, that's fine, but I'm not going. Um, so, but, you know, I think that's where, and that happens, that's happened all through history. When something major happens in the world, 
it really brings it back to your awareness because otherwise we're just going through the motions every day and we're just living and we're just doing what we do and then something happens like you know if you look in the past like with wars and you know all the unrest that's going on now i would hope it helps everybody like kind of have an awakening and be like yeah like this is what's going on maybe i need to make some better you know decisions or assess what the heck am i doing here on this planet if this is all there is and i mean i think that is part of life and we've just Li been living through an example of that that really is why I think we've seen so much change in the way people treat work or when they're with their families or vacations or like you know living more um re working remotely living in different places like they've really I think assessed their life and said hey I don't think I want to do it that way anymore mm -hmm. And that might be a time and say, and your spouse like, well, wait, I do. Okay, that's a pretty major disagreement. And now you're not on the same path. You really are having a different path. Um, and, and that I see a lot, like a, just a major life event. Mm -hmm. It shakes you up and, and it wakes you up. You know, many women, you know, after the death of a parent, um, mm -hmm. the, it, it's just like, no, I'm not doing this anymore. Okay, so that, you know, that's interesting. That goes hand in hand. That's two different things. So <laughs> that is possibly they were concerned about their parents' viewpoint if True. they were to get a divorce. And then, you know, that life event that made them make this major decision. Mm hmm. It's true. And um, I, um, I've heard mo on more than on, on multiple occasions, you know, um, over the 20 plus years, you know, my my mom always told me, you know, she she wanted better for me and she thought I should divorce him and she just died. And I'm not, you know, that's not I'm not staying anymore now. Now I can go, you know, re get my freedom or whatever. And now I am listening to her and I know even though she's not here, you know, things like that. And I think, yeah. Yeah. you know, that that just is a good example of some real self-reflection and kind of like what we've been talking about. So you've known that for years, but then something kind of does happen to make you reassess and take action. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's when kind of, that's when, when we say when's enough enough, what is it that's going to help you take action to really show up as your best self in this world and your life? Because we've only got a short amount of time, you know, and you only have like a short amount of time that you have kids at home under your watch before they become adults. Like, what are you gonna do with that time? You know, are you gonna just show them an example of a loveless marriage? And, you know, then that's what they're gonna probably end up doing. Or are you gonna, you know, maybe make some harder decisions for a bigger payoff later? And I thought about it, it's by staying, it's not fair to yourself or your spouse. That is a great point, Julie, because I, it's not like, I mean, really, we have to guarantee now guaranteed, but they, they may be in denial themselves, but it, it works both ways. Like you guys are both in it, you know, when it's not going great and somebody's got to do something to either, Hey, let's try to get this back on track or it's too late. Like, I don't, I'm not even interested in doing that anymore. What's a good question to ask yourself if, if you were if you were thinking about this, what would be a good question that you could ask yourself if you met your spouse today? Well, I, I think a good one is like, would you want to even go out on a date with them? Is he somebody you want to go to dinner with and have a conversation with? That's real. That's kind of it, uh, it is and it's kind of cold, but yet like it because again, I mean, it's so much about companionship relationship and we've talked about it on previous shows that you know there's some differences like can't be overcome and some you know points of view worldview their upbringing and different beliefs like you just can't you know you can't have a conversation everything's just uh um an argument or fight um i know it's been a while but you know um 
and we don't talk politics on here at all, nor would I, but boy, there, there have been some, you know, where they are like, yeah, we, um, we can't talk about it. And one spouse has taken, has adopted a view that is out there in the world, very polarizing. And the other one is like, "Uh uh-uh, I'm complete opposite. That can really, just like we talked about with the world, you know, people, it's so extreme. Mm -hmm. I think it's always been extreme. It's just like all in our face all the time now. But it, I think it really, you know, it's like, would you even go out with this person who is talking like that, you know, or dressing like that? Good Lord. Like, that's one thing, you know, I mean, seriously, you know, everybody should keep up their appearance, you know, and work on it. And I think that that's something to ask yourself, like, would I, and maybe you should ask yourself, would he even want to go out with me? Okay. You know what? I was just thinking that. I was just thinking that it, um, because a lot of this is also about self-examination. So ask yourself that about yourself. Yeah. How are you showing up? Are you like a complete shrew and just nag, nag, nag and hate him? Because you're staying there. It's like if you're treating somebody like that, that means you need to leave because you should not treat anybody like that. And I mean, sometimes it's hard not to. I mean, it's like how many times you got to track dirt in the house? Really? Could you take your shoes off before? Nope, nope, nope. Really can't. Thank God for those Roombas and all that stuff. You just go press the button, you know? And, uh, <laughs> but I think that this is a great point. Like, check yourself. Like, how do you show up? Would anybody, would he ask you out on a date? If, if this is the way you act all the time, and then maybe that can help you to be like, wow, maybe I go work on myself. And see if I show up different and see if I it's any better. And it may or may not be, but that's never a bad thing because it will probably help you and maybe get more clarity and a little bit of objectivity as to what's going on in your situation. Mm, that's interesting because that could help you before you make this major, major life decision. Yeah. Absolutely. And give you a little bit more. So many women, you know, they want to check all the boxes and they and they do. They want to know, when do I do it? And it's like, you know, you you really already know you want to do it. And it's the right thing. It, it's just taking the action in, in moving forward. And that is, you know, requires, you know, and therapy, again, like we all, I always say, and we talk about a lot, will really help you understand and maybe have a little more, um, peace with yourself as you go through this process. You're listening to Women Winning Divorce with Heather Quick, owner and attorney of Florida Women's Law Group. When we return, we're going to talk about why women wait so long. Stay with us. Welcome back to Women Winning Divorce with Heather Quick, owner and attorney of Florida Women's Law Group. Heather, why do women wait so long? Oh, well, um, I think they just don't want to give up hope, you know? I mean, you enter into a marriage with the, you know, I, I truly believe with all the best intentions and you're doing the best you can. And, and we always think, well, you know, maybe it can be different. Maybe if I go to therapy, maybe we'd have couples therapy that it's just, the and I think also building it up that divorce is so much worse than staying in the relationship, but it may not be. It may be really the best thing for both of you, but um, it it's it's not something that anybody wants to do when they get married. You know, I think it comes with a lot of thought. It's not, you know, because people try to make it work. They've committed to this person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, but some people will say, and I think back just to, to an earlier show that, uh, that we did, um, about, um, um, well, what was the show about? I can't even think of the name. You know that, you know, <laughs> call me crazy. So it's the, the you, what is the agreement that you sign? 
Yeah, I need some ginkgo. Green up. Okay, so I think, uh, yes. Yeah, so when I think back to that show, you guys can listen to that show if you go to our website, womenwinningdivorce.com. Um, so when I think back to that show, some people will say, well, I mean, you got a prenup. So you entered into the marriage thinking that, oh, it could end, but that's not, that's not true. No, and we talked about that. I don't think that's true. I think that you're enter entering into a contract for marriage. Why don't you do some due diligence and talk about, well, if it doesn't work, like let's, how would we handle that? Or how do we want to handle things, you know, throughout our marriage? Um, and actually talking about those, like, you know, hey, if we have kids, what are your thoughts on who, sh on, you know, a parent should be at home? Who should that be? Me or you? You know, do you guys even see eye to eye on that? And that, you know, we're talking through those things, but that's what most people don't do mm -hmm. myself included do you think i thought of that over 20 years ago we didn't talk about that like well who is somebody gonna stay home and he's like no man you just graduated law school you're working <laughs> i was like i didn't really think that much about it at all until you then because you don't i don't know you figure it all just work out and we've been we have been able to do that i think being a divorce attorney helps me put things in perspective a lot and you know, you hear a lot of things and you're like, yeah, okay, I, I, I probably do that. Maybe, you know, I could do better. So I've learned a lot, I think, to make, at least to give me a better awareness and understanding of things that can, you know, cause a marriage to, you know, really dissolve and, and, and tear people apart. You know, how important it is to make it work. It doesn't mm -hmm. just happen. And, you know, there's, and sometimes, um, you know, like I was saying earlier in that last segment, you know, if you work on yourself or you show up different, you got to do that for yourself and it may impact the relationship, but it takes two to make it work and it takes two to, to break it. Like, and sometimes you're the only one, you know, if your partner seriously won't engage in therapy and won't help you and won't have those conversations with you that are uncomfortable. Nobody wants to talk about things like that, or some people do like to fight, you know, I don't know. But either way, if you can't engage, and if you're not, you know, able to even ask him to engage in that, then obviously there's a disconnect, the communication, you know, which I know we've talked about on multiple occasions and shows, you know, at the end of the day, the, the style of communication's big, a big thing that whole love language thing the big deal it's important to know you know that we we did read that um maybe before we got married or listened to it you know but um gave gave us clarity on understanding our own selves like we talked about like the more you understand about yourself the more you can communicate that to another person so when we ask the question why women wait so long, it could possibly be that they're hoping that some of these things that they've gone through in the marriage, they're hoping that it's going to change. Oh, I think so. I, I think that they're right. And that's, you know, again, a denial because, you know, what they say, the definition of insanity is, you know, you keep doing the same thing, but are thinking you should get a different result. If you don't do anything different, it's not going to change. And, you know, that can be so much. And, you know, I think if you do think it's all you, if your husband and you, you know, don't get along and you think, well, if I, you know, if I'm thinner, if I do this, if I cook, if I, you know, get plastic surgery or whatever, then he's going to be more attentive. Um, but probably not if you guys can't talk about what it is that's causing that. And so... Again, I think women are tend to look for a lot of other things to change or to help the marriage, but not really able to communicate and work together with their spouse. So they spend all these years running around trying to, if I do this, this will be better. If the kids are, you know, ready for bed and dinner's ready when he gets home, like, it'll be better and he won't be so grouchy. And, you know, if I you know, just make sure he plays golf every weekend and doesn't spend any time with us and I don't complain, then it'll be better. Like, you know, there's um, all kind of things that you've create in your head, but yet, unless you have a conversation, 
you guys can't be on the same page. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. So instead of talking about it to make sure that, hey, is this it? Or, you know, just being on the same page, coming to a consensus, you try to do everything yourself, but that's really not the right way. It's not. And, you know, I do think that it, you can only do so much. And there are things you can do probably um, always to make the relationship better. But if the other person's not doing as much or anything, you're going to resent it anyway. Um, and it, you know, and a lot of times there'll be the fight. Well, we need, you know, I'm working and now you're mad at me for not being here. But, you know, we now, you know, probably very different from when my you know, grandparents were growing up, you know, you talk about like 50 years ago, I mean, nobody expected the dad to be around and except at dinner time and church on Sunday or whatever, like it just was an expectation, but the way we've grown up and I know certainly know the way my kids have grown up, it's like, no, you, you're not babysitting them. You're their parent, like get involved, you know? And yeah, I remember one time my kids are like, is dad babysitting? I'm like, no, he's not babysitting. He's your dad. He is going to do, make your dinner, make your lunches. And, you know, as we evolved in that way, because I was like, I can't do this running this business. And I remember one time it was the mornings. The mornings were just like such, um, it was just a lot because like he, you know, he gets up and goes to work easy and, you know, makes coffee or whatever, but you know, sometimes they make breakfast, but, you know, I was like, they've got lunches and like then two girls, oh my gosh, get their outfits together and dress them. I mean, my son was a piece of cake, you know, I could, I'd put him in the car in his pajamas with a waffle and a sippy cup. And I'm like, I'll dress you at preschool, you know? And, um, but I was like, that's the hardest part of my day it was like before eight 30 in the morning. I'm like, and here I had to go do all hair and makeup and get ready to like be a lawyer. And I'm like, I'm breaking out in a sweat, like just trying to get these kids out of the house. And so I was able to say, I need help. Like, listen, we got to come up with how we do this because I can't. And we did, and we worked it out, but only through talking. If not, I would have been really resentful and angry. And, you know, hey, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm good for that for sure. You know, and I walk in there and they're like, what did we do? And I'm like, oh, let me tell you, you know? So, um, but it, it sometimes, you know, comes out of that. And then sometimes it's just, you know, you guys have roles in a marriage, but maybe you want to change that, but you got to talk it through. And, and some men can be like, well, wait, I'm working so hard. Like, how do you ask more of me? But we want more and our kids want more. And that's just really the society we're in. I mean, you know, we have graduations on every grade and the kids have all these events. And some days you're like, really? Like, I don't think my mother ever stepped foot in my school. Like, you know, and, and so, and then, then we think bad about ourselves. And then you're like, great. And hey, I've been guilty of that. I'm like, you know, I'm the only one that aren't, both parents aren't there. And so then I feel like a loser, that I have a loser husband who's not showing up for the third grade play in the middle of the week, in the middle of the day. I was like, but come on, help me out a little. And you, but it's like, it's this expectation. So it's hard and unrealistic when you are trying to have these expectations of everything else going on around you. And you have to be like, this isn't realistic because we're not comparing the same. In comparison, it's just a no-win game. Like, you're never going to win. I think we're all, I've, I've certainly been guilty of it. Just that example I said. It's like, don't make me be the only parent showing up, like, as a single mom, not a single mom. You know, you interrupt your day. And, <laughs> and um, and he did a few times. And when he could, not everybody can. You know, so it's like, I can't do that. Or I can't do it. And then I'm like. Where have I got grandparents? Go on these field trips, you know? I mean, thank goodness those days are over. That was a lot of stress that you put on yourself. And so, you know, I think that sometimes if, and if you can recognize, all right, I haven't said anything for five years and now I'm really angry and I'm really over it. Well, you just might be over it. And it might be too late because mm -hmm. you have not, communicated or been able to communicate or you just hadn't listened you know in too much time and you've you've reconciled it all in your head and you're done um you're just done and you know hey that's the way it goes sometimes because you know we're you know we're all humans and you can't control how someone else is going to behave 
Heather, you just said so much, so much. But I think the gist of it was in order to get to the point where you um, you understand each other, you have to communicate or you understand what that other person wants. You have to communicate. Yeah. Got to and sometimes you do communicate and you just might not get there and that's OK. You know, I mean, it's kind of you got to forgive yourself a little. Don't be so hard on yourself because you want a divorce. You don't have to explain yourself to anybody mm -hmm. and you tried and it's. You know, I think that at the end of the day, you if you can just be honest with yourself and then be honest with your, you know, your partner. Yeah, just just, you know, it's time to end it. Last thing we, we're going to talk about is would you say that this is one of the most difficult things to do in life? Well, it's certainly challenging, mm. but I think it's no, I think there are way more difficult things to do, but I, this is. Um, it's going to be a challenge because if you just build it up to be the most difficult thing in your life that you're ever going to do, you're not going to do it and you're just going to stay miserable. And so I'm not going to agree or say that. I think that it's probably more difficult to just stay there and you live your life in this unfulfilling place. And I think that would be way more difficult. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think, I think a divorce is challenging and it's going to be a life event. And depending on your circumstances, age, and all those other things might be more difficult than not. And it might be easier for some people than others. Um, but it's really, I think, you know, evaluating, um, is this how I'm going to spend, you know, can my, the rest of my life or the next chapter in my life or not? And I've known many women and they are like, now I'm going to stay. And then, you know, I'm like, all right, well, here you are 10 years later. Are you wishing you did it before? Yeah, nobody ever says, oh, I'm so glad I waited. Mm. No one has ever said that to me. I'm so glad I waited an additional five years. You know, I came and saw you five years ago and then I just couldn't do it. And now I'm here and I'm glad I waited. No one has ever said that to me. That's a whole nother show. All right, Heather, <laughs> anything else you want to add on this topic? Well, as always, Julie, um, thank you so much. And for everyone listening, I, um, just want you to know our lawyers, our team, um, they're here for you. And, you know, if you or someone you know is, you know, debating this and needing advice and a team to support them through this, um, please reach out to us at Florida Women's Law Group. Heather, it's always a pleasure. Thank you, Julie. Thank you for listening to Women Winning Divorce. We hope you found information to help you navigate your divorce. If you like our show, please take the time to subscribe and provide a five-star review. If you need more information, please visit our website at womenwinningdivorce.com, where you will find previous episodes and other helpful content. Join us next week as we continue our journey of women winning divorce.